Hey guys, Fearsome Marble Ducky here with a 3v3 strategy overview for a Buccaneer. This is what we here at MV like to use for our Buccaneers. Um, so we thought it'd be helpful for the rest of y'all in the community. That being said, go ahead and check out the Team Envy Nation YouTube channel and subscribe to them if you have not already. Uh, that's where we also post our clan matches, so uh, definitely subscribe to Team Envy if you have not already. Also, we started a 3v3 tournament with a friend of mine. Um, if y'all are interested in learning more about that, I have a Google document down below in the descriptions that uh, explains more of the details to that. Um, and if you're interested in signing up, you can go ahead and you know leave a comment down below and I'll, I'll help you sign up for that. At the moment we're running it over Skype, but we hope to be running it on Central very soon or our own website, which we are working on. All right. So let's have a look at the gear for starters. Uh, for the hat, the coat, the totem, and the charm, they all come from the Tower of Moon Manchu. If you're not sure where that is or you need to ask any other questions about the gear, like where to get it from, then be sure to reference the Pirate 101 Central Wiki. There's a link to that down below in the description. All right, so for the hat, the coat, the totem, and the charm, the level does not matter. There's um, a level 55 version of these pieces of gear, a level 60 version of these pieces of gear. The important thing is that they give the same abilities because this is mostly an ability based game. All right, so for the hat, it has to give Super Strike, Vicious Charge. For the coat, it has to give Vicious Charge, Leviathan's Call. And for the totem, it has to give Super Strike, Vicious Charge. And for the charm, it has to give Vicious Charge, Leviathan's Call. Now for the boots, you got a couple of options, but the important thing is that they give Walk in Darkness. Now the best boots you can get are the Gladiator's Gators. These boots can be gotten from the Empire Bundle. The Empire Bundle, however, costs $40. So if you don't have $40 you want to spend on it, um, there are a couple of cheap options that I recommend, and they are almost as good. So that's pretty much what I use, used to use at least. Um, there are these boots right here, the Dragoon's Heavy Boots. You can get those from Farming Tyson. Again, reference the wiki if you're not sure where to get these pieces of gear. Uh, and then there are the ones from the Skull Island Bazaar that uh, you can buy for a little bit of gold. They give 10, um, 10 weapon power. So any of those boots will do for this setup. Uh, just make sure it gives a walk in darkness. All right, now for the weapon, you want a hybrid shooty weapon. I like the hybrid stabby weapon. It seems to chain more. I'm not sure if it's coincidence for me, but uh, I kind of tested out um, that one in the shooty slashy one, and this one does seem to chain more, so not sure why. But one of the advantages of having the hybrid shooty weapon is that you get like three extra chains and Three extra chains, chains is like uh, 900 to um, to 1200 damage. So it's like an extra assassin strikes worth of damage in chains. So that's that's super super OP. And also the burst fire tend to have uh, about twice as much accuracy as the relentlesses do. So that's really really useful. You list you miss less with the burst fires. And also you got you know those in-game attacks, the Haywire Strike and the Haywire Shot, which are incredibly useful. Alright, so for the eye patch, you got a couple of options. You got the Melee Super Strike, you got the Shooty Super Strike, and uh, you got the Assassin Strike eye patch. Now I like to use the Melee Super Strike. I like Super Strikes in general because they cause, they tend to lead to more chains um, than other attacks. Um, so I like the super attacks the best. The reason why I like the melee one better is because it's better late game than the shooty one. Um, because you do a lot more moving around later in the game. And that's when I have, that's when I start using my super strikes more. So, uh, so that's just my preference right there. Any of these eye patches will do. Alright, so that's it for the eye patch. We already went over the totem and the charm. Now for the ring, I like to have ring of 47, which gives the Valor's Fortress. Uh, 
is pretty much a must that you must have a village fortress and a five round hide when you're a buccaneer even in even in 3v3 or 1v1 doesn't matter you gotta have them all right so um the important things you need to remember is that most of this is tower gear which means it comes from the tower of women too you gotta have a five round hide and a Valor's Fortress. For the eye patch, you gotta have one of the three eye patches. And for the weapon, you gotta have a hybrid shooty weapon. So it has to be shooty and melee at the same time. Those are the important things you need to remember about the setup. And lastly, a good pet. For the pet, you want something that gives relun and burst fire. If it gives uh, Rainbow Bless is also really great. That's the best heal for pets currently in the game. The best may cast heal. Uh, this one has Elusive and Turn the Tide, which is really great for when the pirate goes below half health. So definitely more of something like this. And uh, try and copy this setup as best you can. Alright, so that's the gear. I'm going to get to what you need to train. Um... Let me pull this up. That'd be in powers. All right. So what do you need to train? Now, for every class, you gotta train fast too. Buccaneer especially because they do a lot of charging in the game. So train fast too if you have not already. Um, this is pretty much a rule for every class. Train fast too. You can get this at the. Uh, you can get this at the. Swashbuckler trainer. Almost forgot. Uh, also, you're going to need to train Shooty 2 so that you can train Burst Fire. I'm going to look at that real quick. Uh, you got Burst Fire 1, you got Burst Fire 2 from the pet. You're also going to want to train Relen. You can train both of these powers at the Hidden Trainer. So, you got a lot of chains there. So, make sure you train those. Something else that I trained, and I don't know if this is terribly necessary, just had some extra points. Uh, you can train Staffy. One and spooky. The staffy one is what you need in order to train spooky. That's why I trained it. But um, the ten extra mojo power helps with, you know, the the, uh, the gunnery that I have and the ruse. Other than that, it's pretty much useless. Uh, not really a must. Not something you absolutely have to train. All right. Um. So that's pretty much it as far as what you need to train, except for of course what's in the deck. And I'm going to be going over the deck right now. So. Gunnery, you'll want to train that. You'll want to train Kraken's Coils, nice 10 round um, ten round buff. You actually don't have to train that as Buccaneer. But anyway, the things that you need to train are Gunnery, the Veiler Shield, and the Ruse. Other than that, I really don't think there's anything else that you need to train. Alright, so let's get right into the deck. You want your Gunnery, you want your 10 round hides up, your 10 round buffs up front. And you got your Highland Charge, you know, this is an incredibly useful ability. It's almost like the Black Fog for Buccaneer. Um, doubles movement of the entire team, so that's the reason we'll have it on four. And your heal, you can use that early game. Then you got your Fort, which you usually use for Nausicaa in your hide, because you like to hide when you first charge in there most of the time. And you got a Leviathan's Call, you space out some attacks. Another Leviathan's Call, another buff, and you space out a couple more attacks. And then one more Leviathan's Call, and you got several, several more attacks. Um, there's a huge gap where you don't have any protections in between. But at that point in the game, you're going to be relying from village fortresses from the privateers, which will fort you a lot if, if you're playing. Um, if you're playing with a good team, that is, so... Um, that's the deck set up for Buccaneer. I'm going to really quickly go over the Companions. Now for the Companions, uh, you want to use mostly, uh, you want to use mostly Formation Companions. Now I refer to these Companions as Formation Companions because they're the type of Companions you want to move along in a formation. You don't, you know, tank them up, uh, like put a bunch of forts on them and charge them at a formation. So, uh, they move around in a formation. A musket line usually. Uh, there are also support companions, uh, which I usually don't recommend using. Formation companions are the best companions in the game no matter what class you are in 3v3. Uh, so you want to use Bonnie Ann, you want to use Pepe de Torto, 
if you want to use a Nausicaa. Um, now there are a couple setups for Bonnie Ann. Right now this one has Quick Draw 3, uh, Burst Fire 2, and Double Tap 3. Uh, the best setup for Bonnie Ann is Double Tap 2, Overwatch 3, and Return Fire, and Double Tap. I'm just going to say that again. Alright, so the best setup is Burst Fire 2, Overwatch 3, Double Tap 2, and Return Fire. Set it with those epics, alright? Um, then you got your body and perfectly set. Hopefully that wasn't confusing, so I'll go over it one more time. Double tap 2, burst fire 2, overwatch 3, and return fire. Alright, and just copy down these talents right here. Alright, you got the abilities right here. Bonnie Ann has that long range heal, and heal up to 25% at any range. She's got a scatter blast, which is five by nine so that's really useful and a nice little melee attack good solid hit right there all right so um that's bunny in for you now for pepe he's got some bombs that uh, can reach up to about seven range if you include the edge of the bombs it says six but if you include the edge of the bombs then it's seven uh, he's got super strike he's got overwatch three double tap two quick draw two um, that's how he set his epics. Now for the talents, you just, you know, copy down this stuff right here. Pretty much exactly the way it is. And now you got Nausicaa. For Nausicaa, you give her the same talents. Um, and for epic abilities, you want to give her Burst Fire 2, Double Tap, two, t double tap 1. Burst Fire 2, Double Tap 1, and True Grit 2. That's the best way you can set your Nausicaa. Alright, and uh, she's got a lot of point blank shots. She's really great for tanking up, and she's the fastest companion currently in the game. So that's that's one advantage about her. That That's like the best thing about her. She's, she's the fastest companion in the game, so definitely get her if you possibly can. But those are the companions that I usually use for 3v3. I also have a couple more options. I got Peter Quint and I got Gornando. Now Peter Quint is the companion I use when there's a Buccaneer on the other team. Most teams like to play it easy. They don't like using melee classes because melee class classes are harder to use in 3v3s. They're a whole lot more fun if you master them, um, but they are a challenge. So uh, he's really useful versus Buccaneers because he's got that brittle charge and he's got the extra whales might he's also got the new strike three and tide two so um seven of the way that i have mine set with the same epic abilities right here the exact same and the same talents just copy off of my um pete that's probably the best thing you can do all right for goranando copy the abilities right here and copy the talents for the best result he's purely for chaining now a little trick about Bladesorn 3 is that it swaps out the the base stat for the accuracy to dodge ratio, which means that uh, he hits off of his base stat ratio, uh, which is really cool because when he's reduced, um, he's up against Musketeer units which don't have a whole lot of strength. He's going to critical a lot, and he's going to hit more off of the criticals because he has Blade Sworn 3. So give him Blade Sworn 3 and Relentless 3. Um, that's how I recommend setting him up. So those are all the companions you want to use. I'm going to go ahead and do like a really quick demo on the battle board on the YOLO arena as I like to call it. This is, this is a house that I did a while ago. I'll just show you exactly how to use each of these units. All these companions. Alright.
Alright, so first we got... Hold on, I gotta flee. Ah, uh, picked the wrong companions on my buccaneer. Alright, not restarting the video. <laughs> Did that too many times already. I was going to show you Peter Quinn and Goran Anvil. Alright. Let's hurry this thing up. Alright, so those are all the companions, except of course you can't use Emmett. He's just the last companion that I picked for the privateer. Um, now you can see Nazca, she has seven range. Exactly seven range. Pete, he has four and a half. If you're not sure what a half movement is, I'll be explaining that. Goro also has a half movement. Alright. If you move on diagonal square, that means you use one and a half movements. So you can see, they can move on diagonals, whereas Nausicaa loses when she moves on diagonal. So these units right here have four and a half movement. Nausicaa has seven movement. All right. And when you use Brutal Charge from Pete, or Vicious Charge from Goronando, they both have 9 movement. And when you use Nausicaa's Charge, she has precisely 14 movement. Alright, now for the for um, Pepe and Bonnie Ann, they both have 4 and a half movement as well. They don't have any charging ability, so they really can't increase that um, unless they're buffed going to move them up. I'm going to pass again. Because I'm not doing the charging for this video. Just going to have to use your imagination for that. Eh, why not? I'll just do it. Alright, so for Bonnie Ann and Pepe, they're special because they're one of the few um, units in the game, the few companions that have five range. They can hit targets at five range away. So they're the longest ranged um, companions in the game. They are only like, I think, I think there are five companions that have five range. Um, two of them aren't that good. And one of them is kind of okay. Like, I think Jane Canary, Lefty, Pepe, um, Bonnie Ann, and uh, Colonel Sanders, I think they're the only ones that have five range. So out of all the five range companions, um, Bonnie Ann, um, Chantel Livingston, and Pepe are the best. That's the reason why I always get Pepe. Pepe also has um, some bombs as well, as I mentioned before. So definitely get those companions if you can because 3v3 support companions, or I should say formation companions, are the most companion are the most important companions. If you have if you have one good um, tanking companion if you, and if you manage that companion very well, you won't need more than one. So that's the way I look at it. And I'm just gonna do a charge to finish this up. Uh, nasty pet has webs. That stinks. Alrighty. And that will end the video. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. Subscribe to Team Envy Nation if you have not already, and if you could also subscribe to my channel, that would be awesome. Um, and if y'all have any other suggestions for future videos, because um, I'm almost done with this series, that would be great. Uh, put those down in the description down below and again if you're interested in the pvp 3v3 tournament or in future ideas for 
how you want the lead to be run. You can also put that down below in the descriptions. I'll be reading all of them. So anyway, guys, that's pretty much it for this video. I'm just going to let Goro do his attack, and then I'm going to end the video. And, uh, hold on. All right, come on, Goro. Come on. Ouch. All right, so, uh, peace out for now, guys.